What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is pretty interesting because I'm gonna be running an experiment that I have honestly no clue how it's going to turn out. It could be a success or a failure, um, or I could end up frying my entire computer here. What I'm essentially going to do, so this is the uh, the, the go anywhere, do anything PC that I built a few weeks back, uh, strictly for the purpose of on location events. This is a portable system, as you can see, and the one gripe I had with it was that there's really limited space in the Node 202, this case, uh, for a substantial cooler. And I have a 6700K in here, but as you can see, I've got this little dinky Noctua fan. While it's really quiet, it doesn't really have the thermal capacity to um, actually do any overclocking on that chip, so it's kind of a waste to have a, a K-SKU processor in there. However, that brings us to today's experiment, which is, can you fit a 120 millimeter liquid AIO inside of a Node 202? I have no idea. I looked it up online. I didn't really find much of anything. I saw some people installing radiators in the Node 202, but not like a full loop. I'm sure there's someone out there who's done it and I probably just missed it. As far as I know, I, I don't know if it's possible. I haven't seen the proof for myself, so this is a, a new adventure for me. Um, but uh, I'm feeling pretty optimistic. I have kind of tried to like mock fit the, uh, the, the, the radiator here. So if you, if you can see here, I actually removed um, the Be Quiet fan that used to be here. I uh, had it mounted as an intake right there. Uh, so I popped that out to make room for this here radiator. And uh, by the way, the cooler that I'm gonna try to be fitting in here today is the Zalman LQ310. And uh, it's not really a popular cooler. I don't even know if it's in production anymore. Probably not, this is a pretty old cooler. Um, however, I just had it lying around and it's got a really thin, relatively thin radiator. I think it's only like, it's probably 25 millimeters, 27 millimeters thick. Uh, so it runs on the thin side and uh, the, uh, the tubing seems flexible enough to possibly work work around the edges of this case, but we'll see, we'll see. So as you can see here, the radiator fits fine. The issue that, that I'm having right now is trying to fit the tubing through this little opening. It's kind of hard to see, but in the Node 202, there's really this tiny opening that uh, the water block will not fit through. That This cutout is really just for routing cables. Anything thicker than a few cables is not going to fit through here. Um, and this, I'm not, I don't want to like cut into this steel. Technically I could just cut this steel out if I really wanted to, but that might ruin the structural integrity of the case a little bit. I should also mention, I should, pro should have probably pointed this out from the get-go, but you might notice, you might have noticed that the little SSD cage has been completely removed. Now I have the SSD that's still mounted in here and I'm going to need to find another place to mount that because this isn't going to work. The only reason this radiator can fit here at all is because I've removed this SSD cage. So um, I'm gonna just need to find another place for this SSD. I'm thinking just right next to the power supply. I mean, I could just Velcro it down. It doesn't really matter. I don't, I'm not too concerned about the SSD here. It's gonna be fine. There's no moving parts, so I'm not worried about that. Um, so yeah, that's gonna have to go. I'm either gonna have to cut this piece of metal out here so I can have some room for the tubing or the other option, guys, the other option here, and this is probably what I'm gonna to try to do, is take apart the water block of this AIO and remove the hoses. Just disconnect the tubes just so I can route them through this little square here and then reconnect everything on the other side so that I can then proceed to mounting the water block and voila, hopefully everything will go smoothly. But that's gonna be our first step, guys, is to crack this thing open, hopefully not damage it in the process, and try to get these tubes removed. So why don't we go to a place that, uh, the bathroom, let's go to the bathroom. We're ready to do this. We're ready to do this? There's a power button. This has a power button. Okay, ready? I love you. If anything happens to you, just know that. Oh, oh, geez. Is it even working? I don't think it's working. Guys, guys. I don't hear a pump. I don't hear water. Shit! Oh boy, okay. So it looks like I'm gonna have to crack this thing open again and um, take a look at the pump this time. It's gotta be the pump. Okay, I'm gonna power this down. We're gonna take this back in, uh, crack it back open, and I'm gonna try to mess around with some stuff, and 
I don't know, it's not looking that great at this point, guys, but uh, hopefully our luck can turn around somehow. Well, well, we'll figure it out, or not. All right, guys, so it's been about 10, 15 minutes, and it looks like there is not a single drop of any kind of fluid on this uh, paper towel here. So that means our leak test, at least for now, has tentatively passed, and uh, now we can go ahead and move on to installing this thing proper. Um, and as far as, like, fan choice, I mean, I don't know if I can get away with a 25 millimeter, just a standard fan. I might. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to with the... Uh, I think this is a Cooler Master, it came from, from a Nepton 120XL, but that radiator was too fat to fit in here. If that doesn't work, I do have a slim uh, side slipstream fan that's uh, 15 millimeters thick, this guy right here, which obviously is not going to perform quite as well as a full, full size 120 fan, but uh, it's better than nothing if, if it gets the job done. So let's, let's go ahead and do this. y'all here she is look at that ain't she a beauty uh so yeah i got the cpu block on there all right you can see i kind of tied down one of the tubes here kept it from sticking up too far uh the radiator or i'm sorry the fan that i went with ended up being that cooler master one anyway the one from the nepton 120 xl it is a regular full-size 25 millimeter thick fan as you can see i just barely made clearance with the pci express uh, cable probably like a, a millimeter it's actually pushing it up but it's not quite enough to cause any kind of torsion uh, on the PCIe slot so that's good the radiator as well I don't know if I had already mentioned that but the radiator just fits so perfectly but um, just barely made it of course I did have to as I mentioned had to remove the the entire little drive cage here in order to fit the rest of the radiator so you can see I've got the uh, my SSD I, I have a second SSD in the system, but it's, uh, it's M.2, it's in the back of the motherboard. So this is my only real two and a half inch drive here. Um, thank God for that. Uh, and honestly, it looks kind of shitty right here just because it's sticking up or whatever, but it is, it's, it's not going anywhere. Let's, let's go ahead and see what happens when we power this guy on. Oh, oh, I hear noises. I hear the pump. I hear the pumpage. It sounds pretty normal. And we have a boot. We have a boot. Here's a closer look at the pump doing its thing. It actually sounds perfectly healthy. And we need to check temps. We need to check temps because that's, this is all for nothing if uh, the thermals aren't there. All right, max temp on the 700K. We got 68 degrees Celsius. All right, well below 70. Now that's, that's very nice because uh, this is overclocked again to 4400 megahertz. And if you guys remember from the last video or the, uh, the, the um, testing video where I tested this with the Noctua air cooler, well, I don't know why I'm turning this down. Um, the temperatures were actually in like the high or like the mid eighties. I was getting like 83 degrees Celsius uh, with the 6700K, the same chip with turbo boost disabled. So no overclock and we disabled turbo boost and we were still getting 83 degrees Celsius, and now here we are at 4,400 megahertz, uh, chilling at 68 degrees. So that is quite an improvement overall. I would call this project a success. This experiment has passed. Guys, 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 girls, I have just made a very unfortunate discovery. After we ran our little test there, I powered the system off and just for shits and gigs, I decided to boot it up one more time just to uh, to, to do, do some final testing. And um, we got air bubbles. Turns out I didn't fill the loop all the way, 100% with water. And that's just by design. Like I said, these AIO coolers are not meant to be 
opened or refilled in any way. That's just not how they're, that's not how they work. And unfortunately I was unable to, to uh, refill it properly. So um, I was getting some really bad, you know, whining noise from the pump just running dry essentially booted up a hardware monitor and yeah the, the temps were skyrocketing like in the mid 90s to like the high 90s almost hit 100 degrees celsius on one of the cores and uh i eventually just powered the system off and um this is a, a very mixed bag of feelings for me right now because in one regard i'm very very excited that we actually got to run some tests that showed good performance, really solid performance with an AIO cooler in the Node 202. At the same time, did we build a fully functional system that works 100% of the time with an AIO cooler, with an AIO cooler inside of it? No, we did not. We fell bare, just barely short of that. So um, I'm very disappointed in that regard. However, I will not let this get me down. While this is really all the time I have to spend, I've, I've already consumed all my time trying to get this one solution to work. Uh, you can bet your bottom dollar that there will be a part two to this video where I give this another go. Okay, you know what? Screw that. I know I said I was just going to save the rest of this project for a part two video, but I honestly, this has been keeping me up all night and I'm not going to be able to sleep until it's done. So uh, this is uh, 24 hours later after the, the last clip that you saw. And since then, some things have happened. So um, after realizing that there was no way to recover this pump or to fix it, I pretty much just snipped it and used some, some wire cutters or whatever and uh, snipped off the, uh, the tubing clean. As you can see, it's, it's never gonna work again anyway. So now it's definitely not working. Maybe I can RMA it or something. Uh, and then I'm also getting, uh, I bought this H550 liquid cooler from Corsair. Again, another 120 millimeter radiator, uh, which is pretty much the exact same like OEM and dimensions as this cooler. It even has like the same mounting bracket and everything for the water block. So I uh, just wanted to keep it really consistent. I will be ditching the Corsair fan that comes with this unit stock because it's a uh, pretty noisy from what I hear online. So I'm just gonna be using the uh, that Cooler Master from our Neptun 120XL. Um, also, you can see here, I've already made the incision that I was talking about earlier into the, uh, the metal crossbar here that goes between the case. And uh, that's again, just to allow for the tubing to pass through so I don't have to disconnect the entire water block and risk not being able to refill it again. Um, it does affect some of the rigidity of the case. You can see it's uh, it's fairly, it's got some, some wobble, some flex to it. Um, however, I have tested it with the, the rest of the case all enclosed and bolted down and it's perfectly fine. You wouldn't even notice the difference. I also wanted to mention that I did file down the edges of the incision that I made just so I don't cut myself accidentally or even worse, uh, cut into the tubing of this cooler and potentially cause a leak all over my hardware. All right, installation complete, everybody. Uh, this was so much easier with this uh, cutout that I, that I made here, just being able to just drop the tubes in there uh, without having to even crack open the, uh, the water block there was so nice. Um, I don't know why I didn't just do that in the first place. I don't know, I was, I was in over my head, uh, apparently. Uh, but this was super easy to install, um, I would, Highly recommend anyone try this, uh, just as long as you have the right tools and stuff and you know what you're doing, don't hurt yourself. Um, I, I don't see why this is not a good solution uh, if you're going to do some overclocking in the No 202. Um, that being said, uh, you can see I've got the uh, the hoses kind of zip tied here so they don't uh, fray around and, and, and get too loose and wild. Uh, you can also see that there's really no kinkage. I was worried a little bit for at first that uh, maybe there would be some kinkage with, uh, with the original Zalman cooler there. I don't think I mentioned that before. There is no kinkage, especially with uh, with this metal bar cut out. Um, it gives just a little bit more breathing room for the tubes to uh, kind of extend, and they don't have to turn so at, at such a harsh angle, and this case is gonna fall over. All right, y'all, so I just got done hooking this bad boy up. Ran the same Metro Last Light benchmark that I ran for the Zal Zalman, Zalman, the Zalman Cooler and uh, was very happy to see max temps of 68 degrees Celsius on our hottest core. That's that's freaking awesome for an overclocked Core i7 chip in a case like this that isn't even supposed to really feature 
liquid cooling in the first place. Uh, just the fact that you know it's it's this size, it's it's super small form factor, and uh, you know it doesn't have much airflow going through it. Th those temps are awesome, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, idle temps are you know hovering around the the low 30s, but also spike up occasionally to the uh, the mid 40s, you know low 50s, things like that. But altogether, pretty solid. Acoustics is on point as well. Uh, the pump makes virtually no noise that I can hear over the fans that are going on in the case. That's pretty much it though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you happen to enjoy this kind of experimental type of video, go ahead and leave me some love in the comments and let me know. Also, toss me a like on it if you just enjoyed it and you have nothing to say other than that. And that's it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check the description in the link below. Check the link in the description below. Switch that. Uh, for Awesome Sauce shirts as well, bookmark my Amazon affiliate link if you haven't already. And until next time, y'all, I'll see you guys in the next video.